In a Nuzlocke, any Pokemon that faints is boxed forever, but what if every single Pokemon in the game was randomized? On top of that, what if all the gym leaders are guaranteed to have at least one Legendary or Mega Evolution? And any trainer Pokemon above level 30 is automatically turned into its final evolution. And without any further ado, we need to pick a starter Pokemon. And our choices aren't exactly amazing. Kumi evolves way too late to be considered, and Seedot only starts with Bide, so it's not an option. Which, by process of elimination, leaves us with Ralts. Now, Kaiba here has a terrible minus speed nature, which isn't so awesome. However, you might notice he also has the fur coat ability. Since much like all the Pokemon, all abilities have been randomized as well. I then head straight to Route 102 to find my second encounter, which ends up being a Zubat with the Prankster ability. Zubat's already really fast, but since we could face literally anything, it could come in handy. Then west of Petalburg, I head to Route 104, where my encounter is a Nidoran female. Bad dreams, I would have rather had Poison Point. Beyond that, we of course get an encounter in Paddleberg Woods being a Dratini. And while this thing also evolves super late like Gumi, it at least gets amazing moves like Dragon Rage. Before we can get to Rustboro, there is a mandatory double battle we have to face. But with level 9 Pokemon, how bad could it pop? Oh yeah, I guess Heliolus could have Thunder at level 9, that's great. Now while the rest of my team do manage to handle Heliolus and Bonsai, losing a Pokemon this early in the run does not bode well. So we're gonna need someone to replace Zubat, and on Route 116, I managed to find a Smeargle. Now theoretically, Smeargle can do some pretty cool stuff, but trust me, he's not very good. Grassy Pelt does absolutely nothing for him, but at least he came holding a Dawnstone. Choice banned. While in Rust Turf Tunnel, I collect my next encounter, a Wooper. And Flower Veil is an exceptionally terrible ability, but a ground type is always welcome on the team. Then on my way back to the gym, I find out that I can run into Slugma on Route 116. I've already collected my encounter here, but at least this means I can sketch moves like Smog and Yawn. Finally, it's time to take on the first gym leader, Roxanne, and since her first Pokemon is a Mankey, she's guaranteed to have a very dangerous Pokemon in her second slot. Not knowing what it is, I figure my best bet is to set up as many double teams as possible. Once I'm done setting up, I barely miss the KO with confusion fusion, which is great since it makes Roxanne waste her potion, and allows me to knock it out the very next turn. This reveals that Roxanne has one of the most dangerous mythicals out there, Celebi. And sure, Celebi's incredibly tiny and cute, but with a move set of Confusion, Recover, Heal Bell, and Safeguard, we're not going to be able to poison this thing with Smeargle because of Safeguard, but even if we were able to, it would just Heal Bell it away. As if that weren't enough, even still, it could just recover off the poison damage. My only bet here is to try and go for double team and dodge as many confusions as possible, a move that I at least luckily resist. And with a little help from an equipped Ornberry, I actually managed to fully stall Celebi out of all its confusions. And while this thing doesn't have a way to do damage to me anymore, I don't have a good way to put any damage on it. Which means it could just recover off any damage I try to do to it. Again, and 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 again, until finally I'd managed to stall Celebi out of recover as well. Meaning I then had to wait for Rap to slowly do enough damage over time to finally take out the Celebi, claiming our very first gym badge. Hmm, has anyone told you you have the looks of a lady? No, people mostly tell me it looks like a bird has made a nest on my head. Moving on towards Dooford, Nidoran evolves at level 16 into Nidorina. I then have a mandatory fight versus a Team Magma Grunt who's holding Pico hostage. And his Rampardos isn't gonna be a problem, since even though Headbutt does over half to Wooper, an Ormberry means we can survive another one. But of course that was too good to be true, and totally awesome goes down to a crit. I've already lost two Pokemon to mandatory trainers, oh boy. With that in mind, and another gym coming up, I head over to Granite Cave to find another encounter, a Sawaddle. And if Flare Boost would have been Guts instead, this thing would have been absolutely broken. And so, with only five Pokemon to our name, we go up against Gym Leader Brawly, who starts out with a Hoopa. Continuing the theme of mythical Pokemon, this thing is an incredible threat, but at least I have one new trick, being Dragon Rage on Dratini, doing a whole ton of damage leaving it in the red. The Hoopa then does over half with a Confusion, but an Ornberry heals me back up into the green as Brawly then goes for a Super Potion the next turn, healing all the way back up to full, but another Dragon Rage takes it into the red. He then goes for a Magic Coat, which unfortunately doesn't do anything, and loses him as Hoopa to a Dragon Rage. But the problems just keep coming as he sends in a Mamoswine super effective against our Dragon-type Dratini. So, expecting a Powder Snow, I have course have to swap out into Nidorina, who doesn't take too much damage. A super effective Mud Slap then brings Nidorina into the yellow and lowers my accuracy, however I do end up hitting through with a choice banded double kick, not quite doing half. 
Mamoswine then kind of throws the game by going for an Endure, allowing me to hit another Double Kick, following that up with a Mud Sport, which actually does literally nothing. And it seems the RNG gods have blessed me, allowing me to hit a third Double Kick, claiming us our second Gym Badge. Oh, hey there, Steven. I'm interested in rest stones. Now look, you leave my stones right where they are. Moving on to Route 110, we can fill up our team with a Smoochum. Okay, it's got Vital Spirit. That doesn't make a difference since it's dog sh Since the level cap is now at 21, we can finally get our starter Ralts to evolve into Kirlia, and because we have that Dawnstone, we can also evolve it into Gallade. On top of that, Sawaddle also evolves at level 20 into Swadloon. Now listen, and this is important, because we picked Ralts, May ended up picking Dot from our starter selection. This means she now has a Nuzleaf, the mascot for Nuzlocks, and my friend Jake's favorite Pokemon. And we all know that Pokemon reproduce by laying eggs, which means they're not mammals. So what in the world is this? Why does Nuzleaf have nippular areas? I don't get it. Leaving life's greatest mysteries aside for a second, we get to level 21 with Swadloon, evolving it into Levani. And thus, we're ready to take on the third gym leader, Watson. Leading off with Mega Bonette, he's starting strong, but at this point, we have a pretty good team ourselves as I send in Gallade. Because it's a split evolution, it seems to have changed its ability into Sandstream, which isn't particularly useful. We don't have a single Pokemon that's gonna benefit from the sand, so I swap into Levani to eat a Will-O-Wisp since we've got Flare Boost. This powers up our special attack, but Levani isn't exactly a special attacker, so instead I opt for a Razor Leaf, which ends up getting a critical hit, doing over half. After we both take damage from Sandstorm, the Bonnet goes for another Shadow Sneak, leaving Ultimate Insect very low on just 15 HP, but another Razor Leaf is at least enough to take out the Bonnet. However, after both Sandstorm damage and Burn damage, Ultimate Insect is left on just 3 HP. On top of that, Watson sends in a Heatran, which means we definitely have to swap out, going back into Gallade to take a Fire Fang. It does a decent amount of damage, however, here in Mauville, we can actually pick up the TM for Bulldoze, which is quad effective, taking out the Heatran in one shot. Watson then has a third legendary Pokemon in Regirock, but fortunately we have the low sweep to lower its speed and do over half damage as it just hits me with a bulldoze. And because we both lowered each other's speed and I was faster in the first place, another low sweep is enough to take it out claiming our third gym badge. I then head to Route 112, where my encounter is an Abra. And in true Abra fashion, it breaks out of the Pokeball and teleports away, wasting my encounter. So instead, I try my luck on Route 113, where I run into an Apom with Speed Boost, which is incredible. On Route 114, I find a Hone Edge, which is awesome, but it's got Snow Warning, which isn't so hot. At least not as hot as the next gym leader we have to face, Flannery, who comes in steaming right out the gate with a Tornadus as I very foolishly lead with my ultimate insect. Being quad weak to an air cutter, I definitely have to swap out here, going out into my Nidorina, who takes way more damage than I expected. Unfortunately, this means that she's never gonna get to be the queen she was meant to be. Hoping Gratini can sustain one air cutter, I swap it in as the Tornadus just goes for a swagger, confusing it. However, despite that, Gratini manages to break through confusion and hit the Tornadus with a Thunder Wave to lower its speed. Really not wanting to gamble with confusion, I decide to swap out of Dratini into Smoochum, who actually tanks an air cutter fairly well above half health. I then outspeed because of Paralysis, and Powder Snow is my strongest effective move, dealing over half damage, but unfortunately a bite connects, taking out Ojama Yellow. However, her sacrifice won't be in vain since I can safely send in Blue Eyes, go for a Dragon Rage, taking out the Tornadus. But it isn't over since Flannery sends in a Mega Swampert, so I immediately swap out, fearing the attack power of this thing, going into my ultimate Insect to tank a Mud Shot. This does lower my speed, meaning I won't be faster the next turn, and a Rock Slide actually manages to flinch me, and since I can't take another Rock Slide, I am forced to swap out, going into my Smeargle. And Smeargle really can't do much here, but at least it can withstand a Rock Slide. At this point, it's too late to save Smeargle, so I go for a Yawn as I then get taken out by a Mud Shot, meaning Flannery has now taken out half of my team. But at least this means we can get in Levani safely without having its speed lowered by Mud Shot, and take out the Swampert with a quad effective rate. Razor Leaf. Flannery's final Pokemon is then a Mega Medicham, which means I have to swap out since I'm at such low health going into Kaiba. The Sandstorm is at least going to deal chip damage to Medicham, which only goes for a Mind Reader, meaning I got in Gallade safely. Without any great attack options, I decide to just go for a Bulldoze to at least lower Medicham's speed, and it does a decent amount as it goes for a Calm Mind to set up its special attack and special defense. I then go for another Bulldoze, leaving the Medicham in the red as it just throws the game entirely by using Mind Reader again. I then figured 
might have to use another bulldoze, but the sandstorm ends up helping us out, taking out the Metacham and claiming us our fourth gym badge. Axel, wow, it's a relief to see you in one piece. Yeah, it did get close there for a second. Huh? Ah! With access to the desert, I pick up the root fossil, which I get revived into a Whirlipede. With the contrary ability, this thing could be amazing, and on top of that, with the current level cap of 30, we can immediately evolve it into Scolipede. And we can also finally get our Dratini to evolve into Dragonair. And with our preparations out of the way, it's time to face our old man, Norman. And being the last gym leader to have Pokemon below level 30, he ends up starting with a Trico, which is perfect for us as we send in Apom. Much like Bulldoze, we can pick up Power Up Punch and Maul, Smallville City, which is going to boost our attack as the Trico goes for agility to boost its speed. Then at the end of the turn, I get a speed boost, effectively turning my Power Punch into a Dragon Dance that I can baton pass out into Gallade. This, of course, annoyingly sets up the sand again as the Trico boosts its speed to plus four with another agility. I then go for a low sweep, which of course takes out Trico in one hit. I show Norman which is the better Ralts evolution as I take out Mega Gardevoir with Bulldoze. Finally, he's got a War Turtle, which also falls to a single low sweep, granting us our fifth gym badge. I can't believe it. You best believe it, buddy. Crossing to Route 118, I run into Steven, who wants to take me on a romantic outing atop Latias. Okay, Steven, I think I should let you know that this isn't exactly what I had in mind. We've arrived. Okay, Steven, you may have arrived, but this type of thing doesn't quite do it for me. What does do it for me, however, is that we now get Mega Latios, or in this case, a randomized Pokemon that can Mega Evolve with its stone. And it happens to get randomized into Mega Sharpedo. We then run into Tabitha at the Weather Institute, who's easily defeated since he's only got one monkey, the ugliest one that's got the turd on its head. For our troubles, we're given a cast form, or in this case, a Rotom fan with the sniper ability. Now if I were to use this device on the invisible obstacle... Hey, would you stop calling it that, you smug son of a... The other preparations we can make is evolve Apom into Ambipom at level 32, and since I found a random ability capsule, I check what I can change into, and I end up giving Gallade Moxie, which makes it time to take on the sixth gym leader, Winona, who starts out strong with a Mewtwo. Mewtwo X is an incredible threat, particularly to my normal type Ambipom, but since it doesn't have any fighting type moves, I decide to try and set up a bit anyway with a power-up punch to boost my attack. It then goes for a future sight, which won't actually damage me in another two turns, so I decide to go for a power-up punch the first turn to further boost my attack and speed, but the Mewtwo goes for Psych Up. This means it ends up copying both plus two attack and plus one speed before I have the opportunity to baton pass out into Kaiba. On the switch, I get identified by Miracle Eye, but I'm also gonna get hit by the Future Sight attack, which almost does half damage. The next turn, I Mega Evolve my Gallade into the Ultimate Duelist, outspeeding with the plus two speed and taking out Mewtwo with a Psycho Cut. Winona then sends in Simi Sage, which I figure I can just one shot. However, it ends up having Wonder Guard only allowing me to hit it with super effective moves, which forces me to swap out. A pretty unfortunate way to have to waste plus two speed and plus three attack because of the mod but it just goes for a leer on the switch, allowing me to take it out with a couple of fell stingers, boosting ultimate insect's attack by three stages. Which would be something to celebrate if Winona's next Pokemon wasn't Magmortar, which of course forces me to swap out once again, this time into Sharpedo, who can easily tank the Fire Punch. I don't have any physical water moves yet, so I end up opting for a Bulldoze, which still does over half to the Magmortar and lowers its speed. It then gets a lot of HP back from an Enigma Berry and hits me with Confuse Ray. I really don't want to leave my fate up to a coin flip, so I swap out into Ambipom, who ends up taking a clear smog, which doesn't really matter since I didn't have any stat boost yet, but it certainly stops us from setting up. Since Winona apparently has the hard counter to my degenerate baton pass strategy, I decide to just swap back into Bahamut Shark, who gets confused once again on the switch. But this time, I just decide to send it, which ends up paying off, taking out the Magmortar with a Scald. Finally, Winona sends in Dragalge, and since it's probably gonna hit me with a poison move, I decide to swap out into Scolipede, who can completely dodge a Toxic. From there, I can go for a Bulldoze, doing way over half to the Dragalge and lowering its speed. I do get hit back with a Water Pulse, but fortunately, it doesn't end up confusing me, and Winona heals up with a Hyper Potion the next turn. However, another Bulldoze brings it back down into the red, and the next turn, I can take it out to claim my sixth gym badge. And as I press on to Route 120, I pick up a Matang. I wonder how many kinds of Pokemon there are in the world. Way too many, buddy. Have you seen this? We then have to take on Team Magma's base, remembering that their biggest weakness is water. Penta kill. 
But while the Team Magma Grunts didn't give us too much trouble, our next challenge is the double battle versus Tate and Liza. Coming in strong with Hitmonlee and Articuno, I send in Rotom and Scolipede. And immediately I'm met with the horrifying revelation that Hitmonlee has Blaze Kick almost taking out Doomdozer. Articuno then only misses an Ice Beam because Rotom has a Lax Incense, allowing it to hit a Shockwave. Not wanting to get taken out by Ice Beam, I swap Rotom out for Sharpedo and go for a Choice Banded Poison Tail, which does way less damage than I was hoping. This unfortunately means Scolipede has to take another Blaze Kick to the dome and head straight to the Fainted Box. At least we tank the Ice Beam decently well and Rotom can come back in. I then decide to Mega Evolve Bahamut Shark to try and get as much damage as possible on Articuno and maybe fish for a KO, however it's not quite enough with a crunch. Hitmonlee then identifies Rotom with a Mind Reader and somehow it amazingly dodges yet another Ice Beam with Lax Incense taking out the Articuno with Shockwave. Liza and Tate completely demoralized decide to throw the match at this point, going for a wide guard with Hitmonlee, allowing me to take it out with an Ice Fang and Ominous Wind combo for my seventh gym badge. Team Magma then decide they're gonna ruin the world, and Steven says it's up to me to save everyone. Do it yourself, you lazy champion piece of shit. You know, if I were in charge of designing a vehicle to go completely underwater, I wouldn't base it off a Pokemon that dies of the mere thought of water. Who's responsible for this terrible idea? Why, it's Weightlifter Maxi, of course. And the man fittingly starts out the battle with a Fire-type Pokemon Arcanine, which is a pretty hard counter against my grass bug type. So expecting a fire type move, I immediately swap out into my blue eyes white dragon who barely takes any damage from a fire fang. From there, I can fire off a couple of surfs and the Arcanine is ancient history. Maxi then sends in his most masculine Pokemon, Slurpup, which of course threatens my dragon out with its fairy type. So I immediately swap in my Rotom, and here I made a critical mistake. The plan was to go for a trick here, giving the Slurpuff a choice band, locking it into Cotton Guard. However, I just end up giving it the Lax Incense instead. This means I end up missing my next Discharge as the Slurpuff sets up a second Cotton Guard. I then do connect with a Discharge, doing over half to the Slurpuff. However, it gets a bit of health back as it crits me with a Draining Kiss. I decide to fire off yet another Discharge, which fortunately connects, leaving the Slurpuff in the red as it just draining kisses me again, leaving me at 13 HP. Finally, one discharge connects, allowing me to avoid what was definitely the misplay of the century. Politoed is next, and while I've got a very good matchup with my electric type, I decide to swap out into Ultimate Insect since I'm at such low health, who ends up getting parasonged on the switch. Not a huge problem since we can instantly take out the Politoed with a Leaf Blade, and Maxi's final Pokemon is a Mega Blastoise, which we can easily take out with another couple of Leaf Blades. You know what, Maxi? Maybe you should have started a car wash instead of a terrorist organization. You know, Steven, when you said, Axel, you're Scandinavian, right? You love saunas. This isn't what I had in mind. Regardless, at least we can temporarily swap out Dragonair for our newly evolved Metagross. Being the final gym leader, Wallace doesn't hold back as he sends in his first Pokemon, Deoxys. My plan was, as usual, to try and set up some attack and speed boosts with Monkey Board, but that's not gonna be possible with Deoxys threatening me with a powerful Psychic. So instead, I swap in Metagross, who can easily tank it by quad resist and can then decimate the Deoxys with a couple of Meteor Mashes. He next has a Whizcash coming straight out of his original team, threatening me heavily with an Earthquake, so I swap out into my Flying-type Rotom, who can dodge it with Immunity. Now expecting a Water move, I can swap in Ultimate Insect, who doesn't even get hit by Muddy Water, and can freely take out Whizcash with a quad-effective Leaf Blade. Wallace also has the coolest pseudo-legendary out there, Tyranitar, which gets immediately destroyed by a Choice Band Leaf Blade. But that's not where Wallace's pseudo-story ends, sending in a Dragonite and threatening out my ultimate insect with a flying type move, so I swap out into Metagross. But instead of hitting me with wing attack, the Dragonite actually goes for a Dragon Tail, swapping out my Metagross immediately and using some kind of strategy together with the spikes from Deoxys. Ambipom is definitely too frail to stay in, so I swap back out into Metagross, who gets taken down to below half with spikes as Dragonite sets up its speed with agility. I hit the Dragonite with a Meteor Mash, which does above half damage, but since I get to go first after his agility, I know he's going for a Dragon Tail, swapping me out into Kaiba. I then Mega Evolve and finish off the Dragonite's remaining health with a Psycho Cut, granting me a Moxie Boost and enough power to take out Wallace's final Pokemon Hitmonlee and granting me the final Gym Badge. We then have to go up against the sickly Wally, so I humiliate him by taking him down with his favorite Pokemon, Mega Gallade. Meaning it's time after our long journey to prepare for the Elite Four Challenge. 
And so, my final randomized team consists of Monkey Board, the Speed Boost Passing Ambipom, with Power Up Punch, Agility, Nasty Plot, and Baton Pass, Ultimate Insect, the Choice Band Levani, with Leaf Blade, X Scissor, Fell Stinger, and Aerial Ace, Bahamut Shark, the Tough Claws Sharpedo, with Waterfall, Ice Fang, Crunch, and Earthquake, Cyber End Dragon, the edgiest pseudo legendary, with Zen Headbutt, Meteor Mash, Bullet Punch, and Earthquake, Kaiba, the Moxie Boosting Mega Gallade with Close Combat, Psycho Cut, Night Slash, and Earthquake. And finally, Dragonair, the Blue Eyes White Dragon with Flamethrower, Ice Beam, a Thunderbolt, and Agility with as much experience as possible to try and maybe get that Dragonite before we get to the champion. And so begins the Elite Four Gauntlet by taking on the first of the four, Sydney. Famous for his dark types and being a bit of a pushover, this time he's not playing around, starting out with a Mega Mewtwo X. We've seen this thing as recently as versus Winona, where it was a massive threat, and I don't think I'm going to be able to set up with Monkey Board, so I immediately swap out into Sharpedo. It ends up going for a power swap on the Switch, and since it only has Psychic as its attacking move, I can easily take it out with a few crunches. However, as I imagine my problems being over, Sydney sends in a Xerneas. And if I stay in, I'm about to get Moonblasted into Oblivion, so I swap out into Metagross, who can at least tank it fairly well. Even though we resist it, it is still coming off the special attack stat of Xerneas. And because Xerneas is one of the strongest legendary Pokemon of all time, I decide to Mega Evolve as it goes for a Geomancy. At least it doesn't have a White Herb, however, it might as well since I end up missing two Meteor Mashes, just giving it a free Geomancy. And the only thought going through my head was that at least Geomancy doesn't give you plus two defense, so if I can survive this Moonblast, which I end up doing on 45 HP, I can fire off a Meteor Mash, which almost takes out the Xerneas in one hit, and then I can go for a Bullet Punch the next turn, guaranteed to outspeed and take it out. Xerneas did, however, leave me at pretty low HP, so when Tornadus comes in and threatens with a crunch, I have to swap out, and even though it's a resisted hit, Sharpedo takes a massive amount of damage. I unfortunately can't Mega Evolve because I did with Metagross, so I fire off an Ice Fang, which isn't quite enough to take out Tornadus, and Air Slash is enough to take Bahamut Shark out. Losing a Pokemon against the first Elite Four member is absolutely devastating, and on top of that, I forget that Sydney, of course, is going to use a Forest Door and just waste my turn going for Bullet Punch. Because of this blunder, I have to swap out, and with very few options, I go into Dragonair, who takes way over half from Crunch, but it ends up activating its Effect Spore. And because Tornadus falls asleep, I know I can get a guaranteed hit in with an Ice Beam, which ends up not being quite enough. But Tornadus doesn't get the first turn wake up, allowing me to fire off another Ice Beam, taking it out for good. We're not out of the clear yet, however, since his next Pokemon is a Keldeo. Expecting a Sacred Sword in my future, I swap out into Kaiba, who barely takes any damage on the switch. The next turn, however, I do get hit by an Aqua Tail, but because Gallade is fairly bulky, I don't even get taken down below half, and the Psycho Cut is enough to take Keldeo out in one hit. From there, I'm finally done with Sydney's legendaries as he sends in his final Pokemon Kabuto, which I can easily take out with a Leaf Blade from Levani. Which means it's time to take on the second of the Elite Four, Phoebe. And this time, I get a lot luckier with the lead as she sends in Dugong, which can't damage my Monkey Board too much, allowing me to set up to plus two attack and plus two speed before passing my boosts on to Kaiba. And with all those boosts and the fact that I keep getting attacked every single time I get a KO, it's very easy to knock out every single one of Phoebe's Pokemon. Up next is Glacia, who starts out with the disappointment of the century, Luxray. And I lead with the most appropriate counter, Mega Metagross, which I can instantly use to take out Luxray with an Earthquake. She then sends in Gyarados, a very threatening Pokemon, but since it doesn't have Earthquake in its level up moveset, I decide to stay in and do a bit less than half with a Zen Headbutt as it threateningly sets up with a Dragon Dance. Despite that, however, I'm still faster, managing to take out the Gyarados with another Zen Headbutt. In comes Mega Amphi, which just ends up being another casualty in the wake of Mega Metagross's Earthquake. Lamal Venomoth. Meganium! <laughs> The only man standing between me and getting my revenge against Steven for sending me on that terrifying mission is Drake, who starts out with Melodic as I send in Kaiba. I immediately swap into Choice Banded Ultimate Insect, and even though Melodic boosts its defense with Coil, we can easily take it out with a Choice Banded Leaf Blade. And despite being randomized, Drake sends in his signature Salamence, which has both Fly and Flamethrower at this level, both being quad effective, so I have to swap into Cyber and Dragon, who just gets scary-faced. Now that I know he's 
he's going to go for a flamethrower, I can easily swap into Blue Eyes White Dragon to resist it with my Dragon type. I then go for an Ice Beam, thinking that I can take it out in one hit, but it ends up surviving in the red and activating a weakness policy to boost its attack and special attack. It does lower my speed, but expecting Drake to go for a full restore, I can stay in here and go for another Ice Beam to take the Salamence down to the red once again. Drake then goes for another full restore, which of course has the same outcome. Now that Drake's out of full restores and I'm slower, I have to swap out, opting to go for Cyber End Dragon, expecting the Salamence to go for Fly. Because Metagross is slower, I can easily tank the resisted hit and then retaliate with a Meteor Mash, taking out Salamence's remaining health and boosting my attack in the process. But things do not improve as Drake reveals Palkia, which could easily outspeed and knock me out with an Earth Power, so I swap into Kaiba, who can tank it decently well. I then decide Gallade is the one who's going to get to Mega Evolve, since this will further improve my special defense and potentially allow me to survive a Hydro Pump. I end up surviving on just 17 HP, and the way that speed tiers work in Gen 6 is you don't get your Mega Evolved speed until the next turn, allowing me to outspeed and take out Palkia with a close combat. Victory Bell comes in, which I can immediately erase with a super effective Psycho Cut, giving me yet another Moxie boost as he reveals his final Pokemon Excelgore. And this thing easily outspeeds Kaiba, so I have to swap out into Ultimate Insect as it goes for U-Turn since any move would have taken me out. I was completely ready to sack Levani here for the greater good, however, she survives on 6 HP and retaliates with a Choice Band Aerial Ace, meaning we made it all the way through the Elite Four. On top of that, most of my Pokemon did reach level 55 versus Drake, allowing Dragonair to evolve into Dragonite. Which means there's only one more person left to face. Female swimmer Steven, surprising me even more by challenging me to a double battle with Salamence and Conkeldur as I send in Levani and Gallade. And on top of that, his Salamence has Drought. There is nothing on my team that wants to take that Flamethrower, however, Steven decides to go for Fly for some reason, allowing me to hit Conkeldur with an Aerial Ace, and then followed up by a Psycho Cut, taking it out in the first turn. This does give me a Moxie boost, however, because Fly will one-shot either Levani or Gallade, whichever it hits, I decide to swap out both for Blue Eyes and Metagross. The Salamence did target my Gallade, which means that Metagross tanks a resisted hit, which is the optimal outcome, as the Stoutland goes for a roar, sending in Monkey Board. However, now I don't want to get my Metagross cooked by a Flamethrower, so I swap back out into Dragonite and go for a power-up punch with Ambipom. Salamence then hits Dragonite with a Flamethrower, which I do resist, but I end up getting burned. Stoutland then hits me with a roar, completely neutralizing my attack boost to send in Kaiba. Salamence then goes for Fly, most likely targeting Gallade as I try to fire off an Ice Beam, but I'm too slow and Kaiba can take out the Stoutland with a close combat. This, of course, lowers my defense and special defense, meaning there is is no chance I can stay in the next turn since I'd just be knocked out by a fly. Kingdra comes in and I'm of course forced to swap out of Galley to not get hit by a fly, once again going into Metagross to take a little bit less damage from that resisted hit. And since I know Dragonite is going to move after Salamence, I can target it with an Ice Beam to take it out in one quad effective shot. This does get one Dragon out of the way, but Kingdra decides to become a huge threat by setting up a Dragon Dance at the end of the turn. Steven then sends in a Thunderous and Kingdra is definitely threatening my Dragonite a lot with dragon type moves, so I decide to swap out into Ultimate Insect. I then decide to Mega Evolve my Metagross as the Kingdra goes for a Dragon Pulse into Ultimate Insect. It only does about 25% to leave Vanny, and the Thunderous just goes for a charge to boost its special defense. Metagross then hits a Meteor Mash, but I should have gone for Zen Headbutt since Water resists Steel. Kingdra then once again sets up with Dragon Dance, further boosting its attack and speed, and this time I do go for the Zen Headbutt, dealing substantially more damage to the Kingdra. For whatever reason, the Thunderous continues continues to charge up by boosting up its special defense, and I go for a Leaf Blade to finish off Kingdra's health. Finally, Steven has one Pokemon left, sending in a Lucario, and I decide my best bet is to go for an Earthquake, so I swap out of Ultimate Insect into Blue Eyes. He then Mega Evolves Lucario as I fire off an Earthquake, which of course can't hit either Dragonite or Thunderous, and only does about half damage to Lucario because it's a spread move. Thunderous then continues its boosting spree by raising its speed with agility, and Lucario hits Metagross down to just 11 HP with a close combat. The next turn, Thunderous decides to stop being dormant and fires off a Discharge, which actually takes out every single other Pokemon on the field. This means we're down to our last three Pokemon, but Steven only has his Thunderous left, so I send in Ambipom and Gallade. Thunderous then continues to boost its special defense by once again charging, so I go for a Power Up Punch to boost my attack on Ambipom, which barely does anything. A Psycho Cut from Gallade then leaves Thunderous in the yellow, as it then fires off another Discharge 
charge in one final blow to take out Monkey Board and boost our death count up to 10 before we can take it out with a final Psycho Cut. And with only two Pokemon left to my name, that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I beat a Pokemon Omega Ruby Hardcore Nuzlocke with only randomized Pokemon. But guys, I want to know what you thought of this run down in the comments below. And if you've made it this far into the video and you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? You'll also find an awesome playlist of all my Hardcore Nuzlocke's on screen right now. You know you want to click it. I know you want to click it. You should just click it. Why are you still here?